let's talk to Samuel. Why not? Hi, Samuel. Thank you for your patience. Hi. What would you like to talk about today? Um, um, so before I begin, I, just, I would just like to say um, the first caller was an absolute jerk to Matt. I was gonna. I, I mean, I would have told him to f off because it's like, okay, first of all, you're just saying all these things about Matt. So first of all, okay. Sa off, Samuel, me, yeah, Samuel, we get a lot. Samuel, Samuel, stop. Let's let's not let's not talk about. I don't care about the past callers. I don't need anybody defending me. Sometimes I'm an ass. Sometimes I'm not. Let's just get to what you called about. He is an ass sometimes, Samuel. To okay. be fair, <laughs> I just said so. What would you like to talk about, Samuel? So I would like to talk about how, for example, <clears throat> so like, for example, when the concept of slavery, for example, comes up, you know, for example, I agree that, you know, as Matt has brought up in Exodus 21, the Bible's pro-slavery. The problem is, or it's morally permissible, but the problem is, is that oftentimes with Christians, they'll either say, well, because God said it, it's moral, or God didn't actually mean that, or Moses got it wrong. And I'm saying, well, I mean, because... The consensus always was that the Bible was totally more was a totally moral book. But now when people study it, they find out that there's actually immoral things in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So now it's like Christians are like it's like they're rechanging their doctrines in order to try to make the Bible actually appear moral. Like, for example, if the Bible says that rape is wrong, you will have Christians who will try to say, well, no, the Bible doesn't actually mean rape is wrong. Hang, hang on, you, lo you, lost got, you lost me too. So, so first of all, um, the problems with the Bible have been known forever and they've been defended. It's one of the reasons why there's uh, the entire model of apologetics and why there are different views on this. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time seeing where, where you're going, especially when you used that last example. So, so what's the point? Well, the point I'm making is, is that, <clears throat> so for example, you know, there was a pastor who was essentially saying that as far as slavery is concerned, that, you know, people today, for example, what he's, he basically was trying to say that everybody who is saying that the Bible is, uh, says that, that the Bible is basically saying is pro-slavery, his point is, well, everybody who states that is wrong and they're misinterpreting the Bible. But when I read Exodus 21, I mean, it basically has this being morally permissible. But his logic was, is that, well, you have to understand that this is Exodus 21. He was saying is what Moses wrote. That, for example, that this is like God is not the one who's telling Moses to write all of these laws in Exodus 21. So what I was saying was, well, if it's Moses who wrote Exodus 21, then why do people say that the entire Bible is inspired? When clearly they'll say, well, some parts were just written by men with no inspiration from God. So you would need to ask them. I mean, you're telling us something that, you know, obviously we've observed many, many times that, hey, different people interpret the Bible in different ways. Some people claim they got it right. Some people claim they got it wrong. And there seems to be no way to tell who's right and who's wrong. I mean, we, we kind of touched on this earlier today. Okay, I, I was just calling to bring it up because I just noticed that, you know, <clears throat> to me, there's a lot of like, say, defending on the, con and it's not just, for example, the concept of slavery. I mean, you know, for example, you have the whole thing of stoning gays and all, you know, all this other stuff that I disagree with. But I mean, see, from my perspective, you know, even if the God of the Bible is true, I mean, I kind of agree with your position that I wouldn't worship him just because of all of the moral but questionable things in the Bible. But I would, like, if there's, if there's evidence for me to prove that the God of the Bible is true, I would believe it, but I wouldn't necessarily worship or, or neither do I actually even revere a lot of the characters in the Bible because most of them are pieces of shit, as you've acknowledged most of the time. Okay. A good jug of bar, but I mean, yeah. I, I, I agree with you and it's problematic, but um, I, I don't know how to fix it. When we figure out how to fix it, then Shannon and I will be out of a job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or, or a volunteer position anyway. And we've only got a limited amount of time left, Samuel. So we are. I think we are going to let you go and move on to the next call because there's lots in the queue and I just took up a lot of time, like, on the last call. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you for calling. Call us back again sometime. See you later. Bye. Okay. Thank Bye. you.